Hi everyone and welcome to part 2 using the Polygon Library with 3D Studio Max and the Corona Renderer. Now as you can see we already have our scene set up from the previous tutorial and if you'd like to learn how to do this just uh, watch the first part. Now we're going to be make some modifications here to add some uh, some residue and some raindrops just to make it a little more realistic because it's uh, pretty CGI perfect right now. So going over here we're going to change the name to tiles. So that's going to be our base material. And then clicking here, we're going to create a Corona layered material. Yes, we want to keep the old material as a submap. And there you can see the tiles now is now the base material. And then these are going to be the various different layers that are going to be adding on top of this. So the first one we're going to add is going to be the residue. So I'll click this, create a Corona material. And I'll just name this residue. And this is going to be a very simple material. I'm just going to load a image here into the color. And I'm going to be using this uh, generic liquid stain. And uh, you can grab this off of Polygon as well as the raindrops with a free trial. So there we go. It's loaded in. I'll just go to the, uh, the top layer now and render this off to see what it looks like. All right, so that's uh, that's looking cool, but as you can see, it's completely taken over the old material, and, it, uh, and that's because there's no transparency. There's nothing that's telling it to uh, to basically show what's underneath. And so to do that, we actually go over here and add a mask. So click this, choose bitmap, and to keep it simple, I'm just going to use exactly the same image, load it in there, and render this off. And see how it looks. All right, cool. So you can see uh, that image is now acting as basically an alpha channel and masking um, various different portions depending on how white the levels are. And then you can see, yeah, the effect happening quite nicely. Now it's a little strong in my opinion, so I'm gonna go down here to output. And I'm gonna change the output amount to maybe 0 0.5, so about half as strong as it is right now. Hit render. All right, cool. So that's definitely a more subtle effect, and that's basically what I'm looking for. So going back to the parent here, um, just to be clear, uh, the amount here, it's basically this is the, uh, the transparency that would be layered on top of this. But because I've loaded a mask in here, this basically overwrites this amount. So I could change this down to zero, and uh, nothing will happen. So that's just something uh, to keep in mind, because it, it can be a little confusing. All right, so I'll just set this back to uh, 100 anyway. And yeah, so now that that's been loaded on here, let's load our next material, which is gonna be the raindrops. All right, go and select a Corona material. Okay, so I'm gonna name this raindrops. And let's load in the various different maps. So going down here to diffuse, select my color. So this is the, the raindrops color. Okay. I'm gonna load in the reflection map. Right there. And remember with the reflection map in 3 Studio Max and Polygon Textures, you always need to invert. Okay. So it's been inverted. Let's load in our reflection glossiness. And that's the gloss map right there. And then the only ones left are the normals, so click bump. And remember, we're going to be loading in the Corona normal. Load the image in. And I'll just go with uh, this normal here. Going to the parent layer. Remember to add gamma to input, that's important. And especially important is uh, flipping the green channel. And let's just load in the displacement map as well. It's not really necessary for raindrops, but it's still pretty cool. So I'll just load in displacement 16-bit. Uh, All right, there we go. So this material, uh, the basics of it are complete now. So let me just render this off and see what it looks like. Now, of course, this is going to overwrite because there's no mask. Uh, the other materials, 
and it's not going to look very impressive. As you can see right now, we're not seeing much at all. Okay. And part of that is because, uh, actually a large part of that is because the reflection hasn't been set yet. So make sure to set that to a value of one. Okay. Render again. And now it should at least be shiny. We'll see the raindrops appearing. All right. Now, uh, the most obvious thing is that these raindrops are gigantic at the moment, but we will deal with that very shortly. Okay. So um, before I do anything else, so I'm going to go over here and mask this out because we want these uh, these raindrops to be cut out. So going over here to mask. Okay, so we're going to be using this first file here, which is called Alpha Masked, and it's basically just a PNG image with the Alpha channel built into it already. And then very simply, we just go down here to Mono Channel Output and change from RGB Intensity to Alpha. Now let's give this a render. See how it looks. Okay, so now as you can see, the uh, the raindrops have been cut out. However, um, obviously we're having some issues with the size still. So let's address that immediately before making other any other adjustments to the uh, material there. So I'm going to select my sphere, and uh, this is the part where it gets uh, yeah it gets a little bit tricky because we have two materials going on right now. We have the tiles and we have the raindrops. Um, and we want to be able to control their size independently. So what we can do is uh, press U on your keyboard there, and we want to add a UVW map. Um, make sure it's a sphere. And we're going to be using this as a, a secondary UV set. So the first thing that we need to do is go down here and change the map channel to 2. And I'll show you why that's important. But let me just run this out and see how it looks. Okay, so it's looking the same at the moment, and that's because we need to make some adjustments. So, for instance, going back to the raindrops here, we need to now adjust the raindrops so that they match this map channel value here. Okay, so in order to do that, we have to go into each map individually and change the map channel to 2. Okay, so change that to 2, that's the color. I'm going to go forward to the sibling, now to the reflection, change it to 2 to gloss, to, um, this is the normal, so we have to click the normal map there, change that to two, go up a level, and then displacement, change that to two. Okay, so now all the texture maps have now been changed to the second channel there, but there's one that we're missing, and of course that is the mask. So going over here to the alpha mask, I'm gonna change this to two. Okay, now, assuming that this is all set up correctly, Going back to my object here, I can now change the tiling here. So I'm going to change this to say a value of 5. Okay, so U and V tile, change that to 5. Now we'll render this out. Okay, there you go. Now we're seeing that these are, uh, yeah, definitely better size. I'd still say um, they're not quite right, but at least we have these values controlling how many times it's tiling now. So. Maybe change this to a value of 3. Okay. I'll just render this out. Just so that the, the size is approximate. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to get the perfect size. But as you can see, that's yeah, that's far better than it was before. But um, also the material isn't quite right now. So now that we've adjusted the, the size of it, I'm going to go and uh, adjust some other things. Also, I'd like to note that... that just because of the way that the sphere unwraps, it's a, looking a little stretched right now. So until you uh, craft like your own UV map, something aside from the generic sphere, it's better to go with a two to one ratio. So I'll change the U tile here to a value of six. So the, va the V value will be half of the U tile. Okay, I'm running this out. Okay, now the texture is looking correct. It's no longer stretched. And again, like I said, that's just uh, the nature of the, the spherical unwrapping. So depending on your object, it should be fine. You probably won't even have to do this, but uh, just make sure that uh, the square framing of the texture is correct and that the aspect ratio is correct. Okay, now going back to the raindrops material, 
I'm going to make some adjustments to it. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just adjust the, uh, the refraction. So right now it's basically, it's not refracting and we want to be able to see through the raindrops. So we'll set the refraction to level one. Okay, now down here is the index of refraction. Yeah, you know, it's too complicated to explain right now, but basically for water, the index of refraction is a value of 1.33. Okay, so that's a standard value for water. The glass will keep at a value of one, and all other options are fine. The one last thing I might adjust is uh, just change the max level of the displacement so that, you know, the raindrops will pop out a little bit more. They won't just be um, based on normals, or at least uh, be a little more pronounced. So I'll change this to a value of five. Okay, now let's render this out. All right, now that to me is looking much better. If I zoom in a bit here, you can see that uh, we're seeing through the raindrops now, and it's actually refracting what is underneath. And yeah, that's looking pretty cool to me. So obviously we can uh, keep tweaking this and uh, tweaking the size, but I think you get the, the idea of how to just add some, some nice surface imperfections and just anything that uh, can add some more realism. And yeah, we've got plenty of textures on Polygon that can facilitate that. And beyond that, I just recommend that you play around with tone mapping, which I went over a bit in the first part. Play with some more uh, lookup tables. So navigate to the render setup and then go to the camera tab here. You can change the uh, lookup table to a different film look. And yeah, you can get some really cool film grading kind of looks at these things. So you can also adjust the opacity here and blend the lookup table with your original. Now one last thing I thought I'd mention is that if you want to change the lighting direction of the HDR environment, then open up your material editor. And what you want to do is just go up to rendering an environment and take this uh, HDR map, drag it into a free slot, make sure it's an instance. Okay. And now let's say we just want to change the, yeah, the direction of the sun. First of all, I'd go up here to default shading, go to viewport background and enable environment background. And then on the U offset, we just adjust this. As you can see it's uh, adjusting in the background. So I'll just put it to something else. Hit render and see how this looks. All right, cool. So it's sitting from the other side and we're seeing uh, other detail emerging as we're adjusting the light. You know, the residue is a little more obvious from this, uh, from this angle here. So yeah, I just experiment and just play around with these because it's a very powerful way to work. And Corona is just, uh, it's a really fantastic render. It's incredibly simple to use. And uh, the results, as you can see, are very fast and professional. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.